welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. And then today we're gonna do something just a little bit different. I'm just gonna do basically the day in the life, or should I say the weekend with Emma. I've got a few orders that I need to fulfill, some that I've already started. I need to cut down some boxes, um, just do a little, you know, few things here and there. And I just thought that I would tag you guys along because there's a few things that I'm gonna do today to complete some orders that maybe you guys haven't seen me do. I thought maybe you might want to learn and see what I do. But the first thing I want to do is knock down some boxes. I did want to tell you guys, try to save as much as you guys can because shipping materials can be really expensive. And I get things shipped to me all the time for my work, um, for all of this t-shirt business stuff that I do. And I just wanted to remind you, like, do your best to save this stuff. Now I'm kind of running out of places to save it all. So if you have too much, then go ahead and just recycle it but I see it so often that people will go buy brand new, fresh stuff, and it's just such a waste of your money if you threw something away yesterday. Um, or like this box right here, I make, um, I make tile Scrabble letters that I sell on my Etsy page. This box would be like the perfect size to ship a whole bunch of tile letters, because um, usually when somebody orders those, they order like 50 plus because they do all of their names on the wall, and this would be the perfect size box for that. So luckily I've got some attic space and I can go ahead and store some extra boxes and stuff up there. Then the other thing like this one would be perfect if you guys make signs, if you didn't want to do the whole bubble wrap and all of that, you could definitely repurpose a box like this. Again, just storing it up in your attic. Just be really careful that you make sure that you take off all your stickers because you don't want to send that to a customer and then they have all of your private information. And then last but not least, make sure you, re you reuse some of these awesome boxes. These right here, these flaps are typically what I use in between my t-shirts. So make sure that you're cutting these off and using those, you guys. It's free. Like, I mean, I had to buy something to get it, but reuse it. And the last thing is all these awesome things here. So if you guys are going to be shipping anything that's fragile, um, I use this for my signs. I use this for my mugs. I use this for anything that I feel like could break. I reuse this stuff. Now, maybe someday I'll invest in a machine that I can store this flat and fill them with air. But as of right now, I have I have these coming out my ears. Literally, they're all over. I hide them all over in the nicks and crannies of my room. Sometimes you guys will see <laughs> back here. I have them all up here. I have them up there. I have them over on that side. Like I save as many as I can because I reuse them all the time. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and knock down some of these boxes and then we will, um, maybe I'll tell you about some of my upcoming tutorials that are on my docket throughout the end of the year and get you guys kind of excited about what's coming up and then maybe we'll start working on some shirts that I need to fulfill today. This is one of my favorite tools. I couldn't live without this one. I will make sure that I put the link in the description below, but literally my favorite tool ever. Um, you power it up. It's got a battery here, just like that. You just plug it in and recharge it. And I've had this for a good two, three months and use it to cut down my boxes. I use it to cut so much stuff and I have not had to replace the blade, the blade yet. It did come with two blades and you can order replacement parts. So awesome tool, you guys. quickly mention when you're cutting these boxes it's a really good idea to try and cut them curved because I've had it where I didn't notice until the very end and it's so heartbreaking that you'll shove one of these in between your shirt and if you're doing it too quickly it can actually rip your shirt on those sharp edges so I have found that now that I curve these around I don't get that as often but I truly I would put it in I bleach it, it looks so great I go wash it I come down here to press it I even press it I'm checking it out it looks amazing and then I see a hole and it is not a hole from the bleach. Like I've seen the holes in just regular spots that weren't bleached. So I know that those holes were coming from me being too quick and shutting this in. And now that I've rounded them out, it doesn't happen as often. The other thing I wanted to mention, you guys probably saw me cutting these down just a little bit shorter so that they fit better in the shirt. Save these pieces. They come in handy 
Um, if you are shipping out vinyl, totally helps to keep that supported. Um, you could even have two different ones here and you put the vinyl inside of these two, put them inside of that, ship it. And that way it doesn't bend. So it's kind of your own, um, you know, instead of having to pay for those really expensive packaging envelopes, you can kind of make your own. So be creative, you guys. Also, these are great for um, baby onesies. So if you're making a baby onesie and you need to dye it, or even, you know, kid shirts, sometimes the kid shirts are smaller, you can use these teeny ones for the kid size shirts. So save them. I know, like I'm running out of space and my husband's like, what else are you gonna save? But I'm like, it's money. I don't wanna have to go spend money if I have this stuff at my house. So just a few quick and tips. A few quick tips and tricks from me. projects that are going to be coming up this fall and winter so let me just grab a few and then let me know in the comments below what you're excited about um, honestly you guys I do this all for you I mean obviously I like to do this myself but I want to find things that you guys want to learn about and so then I will purchase those things I will try them for you and I'll put together a tutorial but so far what's on the docket for this fall is fun fall hats or winter hats, look how cute these are. With these cute little hats, I've got some um, fabric that I bought. I don't know if there's seats in here. I'll have to find out what kind of fabric this was, but it's 100% polyester and you basically sublimate on this fabric. You cut it out the shape that you want and then we're gonna be putting those on lids or <laughs> hats sometime this fall. A few other things. Fun pillows, you can't really see from this. Let me see if I can take it out of its packaging. Lots of super cute things. Look at this pillow, double-sided pillowcase. Um, I'm gonna be selling these on my Etsy page this winter. But I'm just thinking such, you know, cute little winter theme, uh, scenery or something on this pillow. So I bought a few of those to play with. I will make sure that I have the, uh, the links in the description below for all of this stuff. But the majority of this stuff that I'm about to show you next, I actually got from Tamara's Tidbits. You guys have heard me talk about her before. Not an affiliate or anything. I just, you know, it's a it's a great little shop and I think she's got excellent prices compared to what I've seen out there. So if you guys are interested in doing any of these projects, you know they're gonna be coming up. So if you want, go ahead and get them ordered so that when I, you know, post my video, you guys will be ready to go. So again, we've got that. Look how cute this is gonna be. Um, an eye mask, a sleeping mask. You can sl sublimate right on that. Uh, I got a hoodie. I'm really excited to do this hoodie. I have no idea what I'm gonna put on it yet. But I got an awesome hoodie that sublimates really well, so we'll see how that goes. Again, all of this is from Tamara Tippett. Tamara's Tippett. Cute little Halloween bag. It's got a color. Let's open. Look how cute. My littles are gonna love it. So it's got the green on the bottom and then the green on the side. And then you could totally sublimate all the way around. You could do HTV, whatever you want with these. And they weren't too expensive. I got a green one and I got an orange one. She's got so many different colors. I think she's got like black and purple and just like a lot of cute colors. So that'll be a project that we'll do. I've got some garden flax. So I got a smaller one and then I got a bigger one that we can try. Is this the garden flax? No. These ones aren't the garden flags. These are the placemats, like your kitchen table. So we're gonna be having some fun with the placemats. I was thinking of doing something either fall themed or something winter themed, I haven't decided yet. But really, you guys, you could do, you could do Halloween, you could do so many different, ooh, I just had an idea. What if you did like fall on one side and Christmas on the other? Oh, ooh, I bet you that would work. I bet you that would work. Okay, so those are the, are the placemats. Mouse pad, so we're gonna sublimate on that. Um, can opener, cool, right? Now she's got all the instructions on her website. So when you guys go and you find these um, substrates, wherever, whatever page this was on, it will tell you how long you need to press it for, 
um, I believe the type of pressure and how hot. So make sure that you guys take good notes of when, when you're ordering things or just wait for my video and I'll, I'll teach you guys how to do it. Uh, cute little, you guys could use this for anything. It's advertised as a um, Christmas ornament, but really, I mean, you could do so many cute things with this. We're gonna sublate on that. Here's the garden flax. And I got one of each size. She has a larger one and then the smaller one. So we're gonna do something fun with garden flax. And what's this one? Oh, this is just a cute bag. So we can sublimate on that. So typically what I've done, I have a video where I did a tote bag, but I did it in HTV. So it'll be fun to try something with sublimation. Again, really good rates, you guys. So go check out her website, see what she's got. I mean, if you have another website that's cheaper, let me know about it. But um, just amazing customer service with Tamara. She's so nice. And I know that there's a good handful of you guys that have um, encountered and, and dealt with her and you've said the same thing. She's just super great. So uh, you won't be disappointed. And then last but not least, look at this floor mat. Ooh, like something, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I don't know if it's gonna be Halloween or fall or whatever, but I had to try it. So if any of this stuff looks fun, this is definitely on the docket. I have a few other things that are gonna be coming up. Ooh, I'm going to show you guys how to make this. These are fun. This is something I'm gonna be selling in my shop this uh, Christmas, is cute little ornaments. So I made these out of tree branches. You can buy these pre-cut, you can order them. Um, my husband helps me make them because he's got a wood shop out in the garage. And all I did is I painted them and then guess what this is? This is HTV that I weeded, I put on there, I used my mini press and I made it stick. Aren't those adorable? So I will teach you how to do these sometime this fall so that you guys will be ready for winter and either something that you guys can have on your own Christmas tree or you could sell them. So a few things on the docket. If these look fun to you, leave it in the comments below what you're most looking forward to. If I left something out that you're like, Emma, I really wanna know how to do this, as long as I know how to do it, or as long as I can learn how to do it real quick, I will definitely put together a video for you. Um, but let me know what you're most looking forward to. And if there is something here that you are super excited about, go ahead and get it ordered wherever. Oh my gosh, I just noticed that I, my mannequin is not wearing a shirt. That's horrible, I need to put a shirt on her right now. I'm so sorry if I offended anybody. There you go, mannequin is now fully dressed. Um, anyways, if any of these things look really fun to you, go ahead and get things pre-ordered, have it ready, so that when I put together my video, you guys can follow along and do it with me. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. I'm gonna do another peekaboo shirt, but this one's gonna be so fun. I'm gonna do a skeleton underneath, so it's very Halloween themed, and I'm gonna do the skeleton bones out of HTV. So no sublimation on that one. For those of you that don't have sublimation, but you have a cutting machine and you can cut HTV, Make sure you stay tuned for that. That's actually on the docket within the next two weeks. So stay tuned for that. All right, now we need to get working on my orders. Now that I've got a clean office and I can actually walk around. It was kind of messy this morning. So um, I've already bleached some shirts. I've already washed them, dried them, and now I need to do the SE SEI tie-dye technique. I have another video for that. I'll go ahead and link it up above if you guys want to watch it. But I'm going to go ahead and just speed through it. You guys can watch me do it again. And then I also have another shirt that I'm going to be making today. I have one right here. So this one that you've seen hanging on my mannequin. I got an order for this one. So I'll be recreating this one today and I'll show you guys how I do it. Sometimes this can bleed through to the back of the shirt. Um, not all the times, especially when it's dry, if it's wet, it definitely can. But I just wanna be careful and I don't want it to bleed to the back of the shirt. I don't care about the other spots, but I do care about this one because when I flip it and I do the back of the shirt, I definitely don't want it bleeding through to the front because that would look really silly. Now, one thing with the stuff, make sure you do a few test sprays first because it can come out kind of uneven and you wanna make sure that it's spraying exactly how you like it. If it's not spraying exactly how you like it, this is a brand new bottle, so it should be good. But some of my used bottles, you should be cleaning them out after every single use. 
So you just unscrew it, rinse it really well, spray it out with water, and then store it. Um, if you don't though, sometimes it can kind of clog up the head. If that happens, just rinse it under really, really hot water for a little bit and it will clear it up. For this shirt, you can either use, um, I always use the charcoal SEI dye. Again, I'm probably gonna be switching my dyes here in a little bit because I'm kind of getting tired of these getting clogged up. Um, I wanna play around with it first before I kind of teach you guys how to do it, but with um, acrylic paints and you just water them down, you put them in your own spray bottles. I'm gonna try it first before I teach you guys, but I probably will be switching. So this is the charcoal that I'm gonna use for the bottom part. And then you've got the neon orange. I believe that's what I used last time but there's other oranges that you could use, but I did use the neon orange, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and use the neon orange. Now what I do is I scrunch off the shirt like this. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. In fact, I think I'm gonna change my camera angle to be down so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got my top half really crinkled down. Just like you do the marbling effect with the bleach, I do it the same way with this, but I wanna make sure that I'm not getting lines. I want it more crinkled, if that makes sense. Something like that will probably make me happy. I'm gonna get the orange, make sure you shake it first. I always spray just to make sure I'll spray over here. Yep, looks like it's coming out great. And then I just start spraying. Now the shirt is dry, it is not wet for this technique. There's different techniques where you would do your shirt wet, but I am doing it dry right now. Ta-da! So cool, right? Now one thing I do is I get my napkin and I'm gonna wipe. Whoa. Do that. I wipe around a little bit just to help kind of dry the area for when I would flip it. Now don't worry, if this stuff gets on your fingers, it's totally fine. It washes right off, it's not gonna hurt you. Get this piece out of the way for a second. Let me show you guys how that turned out. Actually. Ta -da. isn't that cute? And then of course, if you wanna do more, you can totally do more. Just scrunch it for a second, like maybe right there. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's off camera, but I just scrunched the sleeve a little bit more. Scrunched up here a little bit more, just to kind of give it a little bit more artsy look. We will blend that line here in a second. So now we're gonna work on the black. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to reverse it and I'm gonna put this on where the orange was. Um, in fact, I'm gonna tuck in the sleeves a bit because I don't wanna get black on the sleeves. And put that where that line is or close to it, right? And then I'm gonna do the same thing as I did down there. I'm gonna do it on the bottom. Just start scrunching away here. How many of you think this is a lot easier than it looked? So easy, right? I hope you try it. If you do, please post it in our Facebook group. It's so fun to see what you guys create. Okay, 
really quick, I'm gonna go wash my hands because I definitely got some black and orange and I wanna make sure I don't accidentally mix it into each other. Okay, now that my hands are clean, just to show you, like it totally comes right off with just soap and water. So pretty awesome. So now what we wanna do is blend the sides. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the back first, just because I want the front to be super perfect. And the back actually blended kind of good already. But all I do is scrunch up this section like so. Just got my fingers dirty again. And then I just take a teeny bit, and I'm kind of doing it from up high. And I'm just doing a light spritz. And I'm kind of do that on the rest of the shirt too, just to give it that painted look, if that makes sense. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the orange. Oh, maybe, there we go. Something like that. Then let's open it up and see what we got here. There you go, you've kind of got a blended line and if you feel like you need to get a little bit more, that's fine, just scrunch it up. Until you've got the blended pattern that you are looking for. Kind of fun, huh? Okay, wipe my hands off. Slip it carefully. Well, it's inevitable. You're probably gonna get some orange down here and some black up here. That's just what happens when you work with dye. It's just gonna happen. Again, I don't want too much in here, but I just want a little bit. I don't want it to look silly if I don't. And probably more orange than black because black is uh, definitely darker and may not show your image as well. up there it's totally what I'm going for that's what I want it to look like as the black is bleeding up into the red so cute so then what we're gonna do is we're going to press the four corners this one this one this one this one I'm gonna flip it around I'm gonna press those four corners then last I put on the image but I don't do any of that until this is hundred percent dry which usually takes about four hours or if it's nice and sunny outside could be really fast like up to an hour so let's go ahead and get them dry all right, so we've got the shirts hanging up outside. Yeah, I'm kind of crazy. I do improvise a lot, so I don't have a hanger for outside to help them dry quicker. So of course, this is part of my garden, but it's not in use right now. So don't worry, I'm not mixing vegetables with tie-dye. That is an empty garden, that, <laughs> luckily for me, so I can use it to hang my shirts. So what I'll do is probably every few hours or every 30 minutes, I'll go out and kind of just flip the sides so that they're in direct sunlight. And then, once we get done, then we're just gonna go back into my office and, or shop, what do you wanna call it? Office or shop, it's a mess right now. And we'll go ahead and press the four quarters, like I said, and then we'll do the image last. So while I was recording this and uh, I just hung up the shirts to dry and I just got another order. So I'm kind of excited because I haven't shown you guys how to do this yet. I got an order for um, a cute sign that I make. It's one of my top seller signs and I'm kind of excited so that I can show you guys how I press HTV to wood. So um, let's do that next. Here we are in Cricut Design Space and we need to go ahead. We're going to start a new project. So this is for the order that I just got. Um, now, typically I will wait like 12 hours before I start doing orders that I just got because somebody could still cancel. But in this situation, I already have the sign painted. Um, I have a few signs pre-made and this is one of my biggest selling signs. So I'm not worried that if they cancel, I'm still going to sell it to somebody else and it will just be done entirely. So we'll go ahead and we'll just get it done. So what I need to do is I need to upload the design into Cricut Design Space. Go ahead and click upload. You can see here, this one says, take a bath, you dirty cowboy. That's one of the signs I sell. But this one is take a bath, you dirty cowgirl. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload the image. And I've got the image over here on another screen. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it. And I'm gonna go and drop it there. Here it is. 
Um, if you're interested, I believe I found this design on Design Bundles. I've had this design for months now, so I'll, I will see if I can find it, but I'm almost positive it was Design Bundles, and I want to say it was one of the free ones that I got with my membership, but I could be wrong. And when I say free, it's not free. It's like one of the ones you give with a credit. We're going to go ahead and click Upload. And then here it is, Take a Bath, You Dirty Cowgirl. We're going to go ahead and click on it. There we are. Now, I know that the dimensions of my sign are 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So I'm going to grab a shape, I'm going to grab a square, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put 10.5 and then click enter. And then there's our sign. Now, my sign background, I have options. I have white background with black lettering or black background with white lettering. So this person ordered black background with white lettering. So I'm just a very visual person. I'm going to change this to black. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to change it to white. And then I, oh, let's put it on top because right now it's behind. You could right click and put move forward. And here we go. So just because I'm a visual person, I want to make sure that this is as big as I want it to be. Not too big, not too small. Now it's a 10 and a half. 10 and a half by 10 and a half square, but on the outside, my husband's sweet enough that he makes my frames for me. So the sign total is going to be 12 by 12. But I think this looks pretty good, just like this. I don't need the background anymore. I was just using it so that I could see how big I need the shape. But one thing I do like to do, and I keep forgetting to try this, I'm going to change this background to white. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want this to cut on the same sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the two together and I'm going to center the image. Yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty spot on there. Now what's going to happen is my Cricut is going to cut this square and then it's also going to cut these words out. And the reason I like that is I'm going to have a square to help me know um, how I want to lay down my words so that it's perfectly center. So now that we've got this, I could go ahead and group. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to attach it. If I don't attach it, then Cricut's going to be funny and it's going to think that I need to have two different sheets. Let me show you. See, now it's going to say, well, let's cut this big old square. And then on the second one, let's cut it all weird. See how it does that? So we're going to go and going to click cancel. And I'm going to go down here, everything selected. You can see here, everything selected. We're going to attach it now. Now we're going to go ahead and click make it. And voila, it's gonna cut exactly how we want it. Now, we're cutting on HTV, so make sure you mirror your image every time. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. I wanna make sure that I am selecting um, HTV, which I always choose Everyday Iron On. You definitely could do a different one, um, like heat transfer vinyl, like right here, heat transfer non Cricut. But I feel like this Everyday Iron On always works really well for my Cricut. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Remember, anytime you see these warning signs to read them, this is reminding you that you need to make sure that your mirror is turned on and that your material is faced shiny side down when you cut it. I always click more when I'm doing my everyday iron, my HTV, just my personal preference. And then we're gonna go ahead and load our sheet and go ahead and get the Cricut cutting. Again, you want the shiny side face down. And kind of see that this I, I usually always buy the mat so that it's very easy to tell which one's shiny which one's not you can either pre-cut this or cut it afterwards but i usually just cut it afterwards okay when i'm waiting i usually get a lint roller and sometimes this, I always use this when I weed vinyl, but when I weed HTV, I usually won't use this, but I'll have it here just in case. And I'm gonna go ahead and start. And I like to weed everything while it's on the mat because I feel like it's an extra hand. It helps hold down my image, or sorry, my, my sheet, so I don't have to hold it down. As you recall, we cut around, ta-da. So that when I lay this down on my thing, I will know exactly what is center. So that's kind of a cool trick. Now I want to have the words stay and I want the rest to go. I'm going to get this tool here. And I do this just to really push down those letters so that they will stay and the rest will come up easy for me. Right. 
just gonna grab the edge here. Now who else gets so much satisfaction from weeding easy weed? Oh my gosh, I love it. I love to just go nice and slow and see if I can get it off all in one pull. Like, oh, I love it. So satisfying. Oh, so satisfying. Okay, so now you just gotta go back in and get all the insides. And this is where my lint roller comes into play because I can just very easily grab it and stick it. And I don't have to let go with this hand, which is kind of nice. <laughs> Unless your lint roller isn't very sticky. So now our next step is to get it off of this so that we can put it on our board. got our piece of wood here. Now this is already pre-painted. I painted it um, probably a few weeks ago. If you were to do this today, I would say you need to wait probably 48 hours to three days before you try and do HTV because you're using heat on this and it really does need to settle. Okay, now as I was telling you guys, hopefully you can see that. Do you see how that line is cut a little bit into the plastic layer? Um, I'm going to use that as a guide. That's the square that I use to measure the 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So I'm going to use that as a guide and I'm going to just line it up there with the corner and then maybe down with this corner and then straight across. All right, up there. Perfect. So again, I used that square that it slightly cut. It didn't completely cut all the way through. It just slightly cut to kind of give me an idea of what is center. So just a quick little tip and trick I do. Now, once this is attached, we need to get our mini heat press and I'm gonna very slowly go over this. I do not use a big Cricut heat press. I do not use my big press. I use the mini one and I have found that this has worked so much better and it doesn't melt my black paint underneath. I've got my mini heat press I'm starting to heat up. One thing I do love about this thing is it heats up so fast. Um, what I've noticed is keeping it on level two is what works best for me. I have done level three, but I have found that it melts my paint underneath. So just so you guys know, I use regular matte black spray paint. I think I'm going to be switching to acrylic because I think I, I did that on these cute little things here. I used acrylic paint and none of it bubbled or got too hot. So I think I'm going to be switching to acrylic paint instead of the black flat spray paint. Now you do not have to do this part, but I do, because this is like your transfer paper and you can actually reuse this stuff. But I find that anything that I can somewhat layer in between um, this it, and the black paint, it will help it so that it doesn't melt my black paint. So once this beeps saying that it's ready to go, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just slowly press back and forth. Now I know that's everything that you guys have been told not to do is put your press down and move it. Well, this is just a little bit different, you guys. This is what I have found works best for me because if I keep it in one place for too long, my paint starts to bubble back at me. So again, I'm gonna be on level two and I'm actually no, no hard pressure at all. Like I'm literally just very slowly going back and forth on the letters. Um, and again, no pressure because I don't want it to shift underneath. So it's green, it's ready to go. Let's go ahead and just start. I do this twice, you guys. I do it the first time and then I go back through and I do it again. And what I'm doing is I'm just checking to make sure I don't see any crazy bubbles. If I saw some crazy bubbles, and what I mean by bubbles is I mean on the black part. If I saw some crazy bubbles, then I know that my heat is too hot and that I'm taking too much time per letter and I would turn it down one or I would go over it a little bit quicker. 
Now this second go around, I'm gonna do it again, but I'm actually gonna go a little bit faster this next time. I'm just gonna do it one more time across the whole image. I get this HTV from 143vinyl.com and this is either a hot or a cool peel. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start slowly peeling it off. Looks good. Looking good. just kind of very softly going over and just making sure I don't feel any edges that are lifted. If I did, what I've done in the past is you can either put this back on, but actually what I've done in the past is I'll put this back on, maybe two of them back on, and I'll just quickly go over it really softly. But I think they are all looking good. Everything is sealed down. Now one thing I also do is I kind of look at it from an angle just to see if I see if there's any lifting. It looks great. What do you guys think? Isn't that so cute? Now, the next thing we need to do, this is super important, is some of these could actually start to lift. I actually did this, uh, I think two weeks ago for um, an order, and I was really excited because it turned out so great. It was like the first one I did without any bubbles. I was so proud of myself. I left it there for a day just because I didn't have time to finish it that night. I came back the next day and some of them had started lifting. So um, it's really important that you seal it. We're gonna seal it next. And I usually do two coats. I do one coat, let it dry, come back and then do another coat. Once you have sealed it, then it won't lift again, which is pretty awesome. to seal it with the polyurethane um, and I've never waited in between like I, I do it immediately because I want to make sure that these uh, letters don't lift this is the type of polyurethane that I use the biggest thing is just make sure that it water it's water-based it doesn't matter the brand my husband is uh, a huge fan of this brand on all of his woodworking stuff so it is the brand I use I have no problem with it oh you know what you always want to shake it before all right and then i choose to use a sponge brush you guys can use whatever you want um, but i'll go ahead and use the sponge brush and then i wash it out really well and i reuse it now it's gonna go on almost you know very very milky or it's gonna look kind of like glue. Don't panic, it's totally normal. That's what it's supposed to look like. Um, as it dries, it dries clear. And really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of putting on a thicker coat just to coat the whole thing and then I'll go back through and just make sure the lines are straight and all the way across. Now that I've got a, a good generous coat on, what I do, my technique, is I wanna make sure I don't have any like bunches in the middle. So I just take it and I go all the way to the end, left to right, and then I just go back the other way. I just kinda go back and forth, trying to make sure I don't have any brush marks in the middle. Not that you're gonna see them too much, but just the perfectionist in me. I'm happy with it. That looks good. Let me see if I can give you a close up. Now, my husband makes the frames that go around it, so I don't go down the sides. But there we go. Hopefully you guys can kind of see. See how that looks like milky or like glue almost. That is normal. That's what it's going to look like. We're going to let it dry like this, and then we'll come and do one more coat once this coat's dry. Now to speed it up, I have some really great weather today outside, so I'm actually going to go put this outside. 
and have the sun help me to speed it up a little bit. Okay, we are ready to press our shirts or should I say set them? So we want all of these awesome bright colors to stay in the shirt forever. Um, like I said at the very beginning, some people will throw these in the, in the dryer on a really high heat setting. And to them, they say that that works. I just don't dare because I want to make sure that these never ever come out, especially since I'm selling them. So they are completely dry. Um, I'm going to do the quarters. Like I said, I split it into quarters here, 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 and here. And I do front and back. Um, it's not quite up to temperature yet, which I'm, I'm pushing it to 395 degrees so that I can do the sublimation print. Totally fine. Just as long as it's a heat, a uh, hot iron, that's what's going to set your dye into your shirt. So as always, I am protecting my press. I'm protecting my Teflon sheets by using butcher paper in between. And I want to make sure that I do this before we sublimate because I don't want that image to keep coming up and up and up every time I press. One last thing, I do not have very much pressure when I do this because this part doesn't need pressure, it just needs heat. And I don't want, you know, the collar and all of that, um, all of the hemlines to get too pressed. One thing to add, this uh, feels very like starch, very like a starch-like material. Uh, once you wash it for the first time, that will go away 100%. But I have also found when I do the heat press, it also helps it go away like 50%. To speed up this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys me pressing one shirt. But I do want to mention, after I pressed this first shirt, I tried doing it with my large Cricut heat press and I loved that so much more. I basically just glided along the shirt like it was one big iron. It was so much better. All right, this shirt is now done. Front and back, I basically just pressed it four times, the four quarters on each side. So we don't need to pre-press because we pressed and we pressed and we pressed and we pressed over and over again to make sure that this was set. So all we need to do is just put a sheet in between and we could go ahead and sublimate it. I definitely want to tape down your sublimation prints because they will ghost. Um, on something that's square like this, I just make sure that I do all four corners. We're not quite to temperature yet, so I'm going to go ahead and just prepare my next shirt. because it now has sublimation letters on it. So you wouldn't want to reuse that. Make sure you throw those away. Get my spatula. So cute, so cute. Oh my God, whose shirt is this? Is this one of yours? I love it. As you guys can see, I never like to waste paper, so I'm gonna make a cute mug that I found off of Design Bundles for my husband. And see how cute that is? It says, I don't know if you guys can see, you can't. It says, this is not a drill. <laughs> it's a hammer, it's not gonna be cute. Super cute mug. If you can rip, rip, because then you won't have those hard um, lines. Whose is this one? Who ordered an extra large on my lanta? This is your shirt. So cute. Who's is this one? This is an extra large yeah, or orange and black shirt. Totally cute. Okay, shirts are done. Let's get them packaged and shipped out.
this is probably going to be a really long video or tutorial, but you know, I had a lot of orders, so hopefully you guys learned a lot. We are gonna do our last coat of this poly on this. Um, I won't show you guys this because I'm just gonna end the video once I get done um, getting this painted. But let me show you close up. That is just with one coat. Doesn't it look so pretty? And that's definitely gonna help keep those down, but I always do two coats just in case. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the second coat. Um, and then my husband, like I said, he's gonna build the frame for me. He nails it on for me. You guys saw his workshop. I mean, I'm gonna leave the woodworking up to him. And then I do have, I got these off of Amazon. It's just this great package of hardware. Um, I don't think it was very expensive. I don't remember off the top of my head, maybe 10 bucks. But it comes with the little pieces to hang and then these tiny little screws. And what I do is I just measure it and I put one on. Since it's only 12 by 12, it doesn't need to. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish this. And while I'm finishing it, I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. So I hope you learned something new. I hope it wasn't totally boring for you. Hopefully you were just able to fast forward through the things that you already knew. Um, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for staying tuned and subbing and being a part of my channel with me. Don't forget that we do have a Facebook group where um, we share tips and tricks and ideas. Um, if you guys do fun things that I teach you, share them with me on my Facebook page. I love to see what you guys create. Uh, the Facebook page is Emma DIY, or Emma's Cottage DIY. So go ahead and look it up and just come and play with us. Um, as always, don't forget to like this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. But the most important thing is don't forget to ring that bell so that you get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.